Hello boys and girls, thanks for tuning in, and as always, welcome to the joy of piping. And this morning I'm enjoying yet another Jake Hackert. This one uh, being one of my favorites, and we'll talk about that in a moment, with a little bit of Mississippi River. I've got a, an 8 ounce tin, it was a 2014 vintage, that I opened in October, and I'm still kind of working my way through. I don't smoke near as often as I used to. And if it were a two ounce tin, I probably wouldn't worry so much, but with an eight ounce tin, I have it kind of tucked away in the bottom of my desktop humidor, uh, right next to the humidifier pads that I have. And I'm doing my best to get through it before it dries out. So it's, I'm, as much as I'm craving it, it's not the only reason that I continually smoke it. It is one of my favorite blends too. Um, and of course I've got what's left of some black coffee in the old Danish pipe shop mug, 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 <laughs> mug. You know, the other day, and there's, there's an astounding thing that happens when you're on YouTube is if you're on your subscriptions page, obviously you're seeing things in real time uh, in the order that they were posted. But occasionally we don't click subscriptions. We go to the suggested page and that's where I st uh, stumbled across a video, uh, 2 a.m. pipe on the patio, which I believe the gentleman's name is Glenn. If, if I'm mistaken, I'm sorry. I should have researched that before I started talking, but that's not how my brain works. And he did uh, kind of a couple of videos on pipes. And it made me think, uh, for a while there, I've been thinking about speaking on the same subject. And with this particular pipe in hand, I feel like it's a good idea to go ahead and jump on that today. You know, there's something about certain pipes. And while you might not be able to quantify it right away, there's always at least one or two pipes in your collection that stand out from the rest of them. Now this one I've done a lot of kind of soul searching on to see if I can figure out why I felt that it was such a good pipe and why it was such a good match for me. And part of the reason you see me inspecting it is because this is the only pipe in my collection where I cannot see a seam between the stem and the shank. And I have five or six other Jake Hackert pipes in my collection where you can lightly see it in most manufacturers you will be able to see just a little bit but this is the only one that I've ever owned uh, that comes close to being perfect as far as the fit goes with the stem up against the shank does that make a big difference in smoking quality I don't know but when you're trying to find reasoning for something when you're looking for something that quantifies why you're experiencing a good smoke that is one of the variables that may or may not play a role. I guess if it were a big enough gap, it might be problematic. But then again, that would have something to do with the way that the mortise fits the tenon. Now we're getting into physics and thermodynamics, airflow. So I can help with some of those things, and I can sort through some of those things. But uh, the rest of them are probably a little bit beyond me. But the reason we're talking about pipes is because every collection has at least one or two pipes in them that are what the owner feels is uh, pure magic. I guess would be the easiest way to explain it. A pipe that smokes everything well. But how come not every pipe smokes like that? You know, how do you how do you find those pipes? And I don't think that it is something that you can just go out and find. I think it is there's a lot of variables that have to be in play at the same time to make a pipe that suits you and your smoking style perfectly. Now I bring this pipe up in particular because I have said in the past that as much as I love the shape and I love the shape of the stem, I am not wholly in love with the color. Now on most days, we'll say 95% of days, I'm look at this and I see Halloween-esque, so pumpkin where it's, you can see it's a little bit darker here in the swirl and then lightens up and then on top we've got a much lighter coloration 
to this orange stem. And in some ways, from this angle, it tends to look amber, but it's very clearly an orange stem. There are some days where I just, it doesn't really catch my eye. And then most of the time, it does. And I often wondered what would happen if I got in touch with Mr. Hackert and had him form a separate stem for this pipe, maybe a black stem, something that I could change out, or just a different color in general. And I realized that perhaps if I change the stem, I will not enjoy this pipe near as much as I normally do. That is debatable, I suppose. Um, very hard to see if that is actual, if that would actually have a very noticeable bearing on the quality of the smoke that I get from the pipe. I know there are a lot of you guys that probably have some fairly large pipe collections, and I thought what I would throw my two cents in on today, as quickly as I can, would be how I choose a pipe and why. There were some older videos on here, um, that, and a couple of years ago I kind of did a mass culling of the content that I put on this channel because some of it was just useless to me or old or outdated information. So I made the executive decision to remove a great number of videos. And because of that, some of the old information is not available for comparison, but I can tell you uh, that I have gone through a lot of changes in my pipe collection over the last few years. Nature, guys, nature. Uh, my pipe collection has undergone a massive change, and there's even some, some pipes, uh, there are very few pipes, we'll say, that are left over from uh, 10 years ago when I started smoking a pipe. And that's kind of how this pipe ties into it. How is it that I'm choosing pipes and why are some pipes not making the cut after some after however much time? The honest answer is this. Everything starts with a pipe somewhere. The easiest thing that you can do to try to begin growing a collection of pipes is to find pipes, find your style, find the pipes that suit you. Now some people will have a very eclectic collection of pipes where every pipe is a little bit different, you don't see any commonality between them. Other people will probably be more like me where you own several pipes from the same maker or several pipes that look very similar. And there's nothing wrong with that. Every, every single pipe that makes its way into my collection has to pass the fit and finish test where if it doesn't look like a pipe that I would like, then it's never going to make it in here. I don't care if somebody has smoked it and says that this pipe actually smokes itself. It is the best smoking pipe I've ever seen, I've ever owned, I've ever heard of. You need to have it. If it doesn't look good or look good to my eye, and of course beauty is in the eye of the beholder, then I'm not going to purchase it. So fit and finish is number one. Is it the type of pipe that I like? You may notice that uh, I tend to like rusticated pipes, typically a darker finish, um, mahogany, dark brown, black. These are the looks that kind of fit my eye. And that makes all the difference in the world to me. Now occasionally, um, things like the Jay Cackert Lumberjack uh, where they're more a natural finish. That doesn't happen very often, but I do run into several pipes here and there. Um, let's say once or twice a month, I run into a pipe that is in that colorway. 
that does that does speak to me a little bit. So is the pipe the right look? Is it the right size? You'll find too that a lot of my pipes are among the larger size. So as I said before, I don't have small hands. This bowl is probably uh, almost three inches tall, two and a half to three inches tall from top to bottom. Um, more in the probably, yeah, about two and a half. Um, it is a fairly large pipe. The bowl is fairly deep, which you can probably tell from there. It does hold a good deal of tobacco, and those are the kinds of things that I look for in pipes. Part of the reason I like Jake Hackert is even when they look to be a compact pipe, they still do, they still do hold quite a bit of tobacco. Um, that doesn't mean that smaller pipes aren't on the menu, but typically if I'm looking for a smaller pipe, then I will shift to, like, Savinelli. I also look at the bore on a pipe typically for a Latakia forward blend, so anything English, Balkan, something with Latakia in it, I'm looking for a 7 8 bowl. And for anything Virginia, I'm typically looking for 3 quarter inch drilling. That is more personal preference than anything. Uh, because it, I have just found uh, through experimentation that 7 8 bowl tends to do Latakia much better than a 3 quarter inch bowl, at least for my tastes. And then that leads me to the next part. So we've, we've finally picked our pipe, we've, we've found all the things that we're looking for. We've got the right look, we've got the right dimensions, we have uh, the right accessories. Um, so for me, accessory is uh, the ornamentation of the stem or perhaps uh, the special type of sandblast or something like that. Anything outside of uh, a standard look. Um, and then we kind of head into functionality. So fit and finish comes first. Now we're touching on functionality. And that's where things really start to come together. So in the case of this pipe, I know that if I put anything with a lot of key in it, it's going to smoke very well. It smokes pretty much anything you put in it, but there's just something about how it delivers smoke. I don't know if it's because it is a much larger bowl and a thicker stem. It is not reverse calabash by any way, but um, by any means, by any way, Lord Almighty, I need to go back to high school. It's not a reverse calabash by any means. But there is something about the shape of this particular pipe that leads to a much cooler smoke than many of the other pipes I have. Um, it is a big, thick bowl, so it does make a big difference in that I can smoke it heavily and not burn my fingers. You know, you can do the old nose test, and it doesn't burn. Um, it is a very comfortable fit for my hand, and it is also not difficult to clench. And as I've said in the past... I am not Joffrey the Giant, so I am not going to continue to attempt to clench a pipe and talk to you at the same time. And those are the things that I kind of think about when I'm, when I'm envisioning the functionality of a pipe. Does it fit well in my hand? Is the, is the grain comfortable to hold? Is the pipe... Is the, the bit on the pipe a comfortable bit to put between my teeth? Can I clench this pipe? Does it smoke hot? Does it smoke cool? Does it smoke wet? Does it smoke dry? These are all the things that I am looking at uh, when I am testing the functionality of a pipe to kind of gauge whether or not it is worth keeping my collection. And here is where I may stray from the way a lot of people think that if I am finding that I am not having enjoyable experiences with a pipe, I am not adverse to letting it go. Now I know some people would probably be surprised to hear that I am comfortable you know testing out a pipe and then finding that it doesn't work and then just letting it go. 
yes, pipes do cost money, and I do have to do my best to kind of get back the investment that I put into it, but not every pipe is going to be a home run. Sometimes you're going to have a pipe that no matter how much you enjoy it, the look of it, it just doesn't suit you. And I had that experience with a with a pipe recently, well, within recent years, that it simply did not smoke well for me, so I let it go. Now, this far on, we're probably four or five years now since I let that pipe go. I actually have tried to reach out to the person that I sold it to via eBay to get my hands on it again, see if he'd part with it. So far, no luck. Um, it was a beautiful, beautiful Boswell kind of tomato um, bent pipe. It just, at the time, I loved the look of it. I thought it was pretty much perfect. Fit my hand very well. Fit and finish, matte. It was a perfect match for me as far as functionality went. Um, I think I could not find the right blend for that pipe. So usually I'll start with Virginia's in a pipe. So that one was of a, it was a Boswell pipe. It had a one inch diameter bowl, which means that I could have gone in either direction. Um, this Virginia for me does pretty well in a very large bowl as well as Latakia does. So I usually start with a Virginia. I'll try a couple of different types of Virginias with it. flakes, uh, rubbed out, folded, um, loose fill, uh, shag cut things. I'll try everything. And then I'll move on to Latakia if that's not working for me. And that's exactly what happened with this pipe is I tried several different blends, um, Virginia blends, and then several different Latakia blends, and I simply could not get it to smoke well for me. Now in a recent video, and I keep tying back to recent videos because everything is kind of a, it's either I shoot one video that's an hour and a half long, or I tie back to them over the course of each separate video, I, I mentioned that I was having some issues with the way that I filled the pipe. It didn't dawn on me until recently that perhaps it was my technique, the Purity of Technique video I did a few months ago. Uh, perhaps it was my technique that was lacking that led to not enjoying that pipe near as much as I could have. And I tell you, friends, that is a question I'm going to be asking myself for a long time to come because I don't think I'll ever get my hands on that pipe again as much as I would love to. Sometimes it just happens. So, And that's something uh, that I may talk in another video. Um, pipes, pipes that we let go and regretted or pipes that we've lost. And... Ah, Kind of see how that goes from there. So I'd like to thank you all for joining me this Friday morning, and uh, perhaps I'll see you again uh, tomorrow or Sunday for our weekly pipe meditation together. Until then, keep me smoking, stay safe, we'll catch you on the next one.